is Saturday again, slew Saturday, and um, I don't know if mine is going to be that slow, but it's certainly going to be most enjoyable. So what am I planning for today? Well, to do as little as possible for as long as possible, and that obviously excludes crochet on it, so that's actually all I want to do for the whole day. Okay. Uh, we have some of our children that are coming over this afternoon for uh, Braiki, uh, Bobby. Um, my husband wants to um, use his new dry grip for the first time. The children and I uh, got him a new bride grid for Father's Day. Yes, I know Father's Day is only tomorrow in two weeks, but I can't keep a surprise. I just can't. Oh, if I've got something for somebody, I want to give it to them as soon as possible. Um, I have huge admiration for the people that start buying Christmas presents in October and hide them until December. You're good. You're very good. I'm not that good. We had a photo shoot on Thursday. This is the last time that I will show you the double bubble beanie. It is now complete. The last time you saw it, um, the ponytail version wasn't completed. So there are the two beanies. The little ponytail one went off quite well. And um, my models were very unwilling after the photo shoot to hand back the beanies. So they are very nice and warm. So that pattern is out. It's available. Um, if you are one of my paid patrons on Patreon, um, for those of you that don't know, you can join my Patreon um, tier Living the Slow Life for $3 a month. And this beanie pattern was or is $3 and the paid patrons got it for free. Um, not only that, but they also got the um, Lady Hawk shawl pattern for free, and she's on Ravelry now for five dollars. So for the three dollars they've spent for the month, they got eight dollars in return on free patterns. Okay. So what am I working on at the moment? Little Miss Crossover is progressing well. She needs sleeves now and she needs a cowl. She's going to get a fat cowl collar that you can either button up the whole way and scrunch it down so it sits like a cowl or you can button it up halfway and fold it over so it sits like a polo neck nearly or you can leave it open and it will lay over the shoulders and the top of the back like that. I'm quite happy with her. Um, she's quite heavy, but I think it's due to the yarn that I'm using. This is African Expressions Freedom. Very nice fit for a jacket type thing. So I'm very happy with her. She's progressing nicely. I might work on her today. I might not. I'll see what I feel like. Then I'm also working on the lock cabin cowl. You remember I said there's a crochet cowl coming. And um, it is made in a lock cabin fashion but you won't really see lock cabin when it's done so let me give you a quick sneak preview she's not blocked yet so it's wobbly all over the place that's one of the things that happen when you mix different stitch patterns together they all behave differently so here is the sneak preview of the lock cabin cowl it doesn't look like a lock cabin it looks like blocks different blocks that have been joined together but, oh, I'm so happy I don't have to join blocks at the end of the day. Look, if you want to demotivate me, this, you know, when you're doing a cull and you've got this growing stack of blocks waiting to be joined at the end. I don't like it. I really don't. So this one is right up my alley when I've knitted the last block. All that it needs is a border. Everything is one piece which I really really like very much now if you don't no I'm not going to share you all the secrets yet it's a lock cabin I promise okay now do you remember this one let's play the one that I stuffed up so badly let me tell you a story um my mom was a firm believer that if you mix different stitch patterns 
you should actually not use different colors as well. And if you use different colors, you shouldn't use different stitch patterns. Because according to her, it looks like an out-of-place Christmas tree. Now, I went with that for quite my life. And when I got this jersey done, the sweater, I, when we started working on it, I said to Alta, Alta wanted different colors and different stitch patterns. And I said, two colors. I'll go with two. Two. That's the limit. Two. Otherwise, it's going to look like the dog's breakfast. And Alta said, yeah, you might be right. So we made the sweater in two colors. Now, let me tell you. The relationship between a designer and testers. It's a very interesting relationship. We get very angry at each other at times. And then... By the time we're finished, we're all friends and we all love the project. But it's tough walk sometimes. And if a tester comes back and says to me, I want to test for you again. I feel so special and so loved. <laughs> and I think, wow, <laughs> you've survived me with one project. You want to come back for another? Yes, they what? So I have a bunch of testers who've tested for me for a long time. They, they don't get phased when I get excited. They know me well. But what often happens is I will give them a piece of the pattern. Now, some, some designers are so gifted that they can knit or crochet an entire project and then go sit down and write the pattern and send it to the testers and say, okay, this is what the item looked like. I'm like, how do you do that? I'm not that good. No. I don't even... Even if I do one section and write the pattern for that section and do the section and write a pattern for that section and when I'm done give it to the testers that still bowls me over because if the tester asks a question in the first section and I've completed the jacket I'm really really rattling my brains to figure out what I did what she's asking and what the solution is the moment I'm done with it it's out of my head it's gone it just disappears I think I think there's not enough space in my brain's archives for old projects. I really battle to answer questions on something that I'm not working on anymore. So, my testers are used to staying right on my heels. And then oftentimes it will be like, there's a mistake in the pattern, the count's not working out. My heart starts racing immediately. I get like a mini panic attack. I'm not kidding. I put down everything else that I'm working on and I go back and I try to see. And oftentimes, if I can't figure it out, it means I frog back to where the tester is to redo and retest my own pattern. So, um, and then if, if, we discover that the tester counted like her backside. Obviously, <laughs> obviously, I'm having a little bit of a tantrum in my house because I've just frogged big piece to retest it. And oftentimes, it's me. Don't think I don't make mistakes. I make many mistakes, huge mistakes. But my testers are patient. So, what happened with this one? This one is still in the naughty corner. Those of you that don't know. Um, and this is a pattern that I wrote. This is my, <laughs> my pattern. If you look at this. Um, how can I put it? If you look at this fat cable. <laughs> this one. There's one, two, three, four repeats. And then I did the front. And for some obscure reason. There's just three. <laughs> so this this project has been in the naughty corner I've been trying to think where I'm gonna cut it that would be the easiest way to just add the pattern repeat that I missed but guess what I'm not gonna do it hold on to your chairs I'm gonna frog this baby entirely okay not entirely I'm gonna frog the neck and undo the shoulders to get the front and the back and then I'm going to frog them both back right down to the ribbing 
to here and then I'm gonna redo it and you want to know why one of my testers did not read the freaking pattern she missed out on I want to limit it to two colors Which even under normal circumstances is not a problem for me. I mean, you're testing the pattern. You can put your own spin on it. I just want to know that the pattern is working. But when she saw all the other testers, when they posted their photos, she noticed that mine had two colors, that one had two colors, that one had two colors. She suddenly felt she shouldn't share hers because she had nine colors. And she thought she made a huge mistake. And being a tester for the first time, she was petrified. Imagine that. She thought I was going to shit on her. But when I saw her sweater, I realized my mom was wrong. And I was wrong. Her sweater, the nine colors that she used, made this pattern come alive. Now it looks like Let's Play. It is freaking awesome. I couldn't stop staring at it yesterday. I literally begged her to come to the photo shoot on the 18th of June. We've got a photo shoot book on the 18th of June for Let's Play and Little Miss Crossover Cardigan and another project that I'm going to tell you about just now. Um, I begged her to come to the photo shoot. She has to. Because I'm not going to have mine done by then. And hers is simply beyond beautiful. Really. And she said she's a bit apprehensive to come to the photo shoot because she's not a small girl. And I'm like, why does that bother you? You know what? Let me just drink my coffee. It's getting cold. We should really stop listening to society. Really? Who says you've got to be skinny as a freaking brick to look good? When I look at her in that sweater, she is beautiful. She is absolutely beautiful. Yeah, she's not small. And so what? She's not unhealthy either. Why are we trying to fit in what society wants us to do? But why? And if you go and you look at all these influencers and models on Instagram and whatever, they don't even look like that in real life. They Photoshop their photos. So we are chasing this fake, plastic, non-existing person that actually doesn't exist. We're trying to look like something that's totally unrealistic. But why? I don't know. So Daphne will come to the photo shoot. She said she would. And I'm going to nag her. I tell you, I will nag her daily until I get her there. You have to see it on her. It is beyond beautiful. It blew my mind. I was wrong. I was wrong, wrong, wrong. I was so wrong. That design looks fabulous with that colors. So between me and all my testers and friends, we are now going to have a ball exchange. Because I've got freedom. I know Alta has got freedom. I'm still going to hassle her. Michelle has got freedom. Um, I think I let my have. I don't know. But I'll find out today. And I'm going to exchange balls with them. I want two of yours. I'll give you two of mine. Until I've got about nine colors. Then I'll re-knit it. Now, speaking of knitting. I am so tempted to cast on. Oh, I've got yarn that I want to knit with. Now, if I tell you what it is, you're going to look at me and think I've lost my marbles. Or I'm a few grabs short of a bunch. Let me show you what it is. This is um, pure cotton Erin. And it's a cabled yarn. It's a very nice thick yarn with a lovely texture. From Colorspun. And this is kit silk from Colorspun. I'm gonna double these two 
I'm going to use these two in a double strand fashion. And um, I know you're looking at me wondering why are you pairing kit silk with cotton? Luxury, let me tell you. Affordable luxury. I was at um, Donna from Colorspun's place a couple of weeks ago and she was knitting with this combination and I felt it in my hand and I fell in love. The feel of the knitted piece, hey, the feel of the knitted piece was just, it's thick, it's heavy, it is warm, it is so nice, but it's got this drape because of the cotton. Um, Merino doesn't give you drape, but cotton does. And these two together is a match made in heaven. I know you scratching your head. I was scratching my head when she told me what it was. I couldn't believe it, but it is amazing. So I want to cast on with this as soon as I can, but... I'm not going to cast on until about the 15th of June. And I'll tell you why. You remember a while ago back I was moaning about my knitting pins. I wanted to replace my chow goose with wooden knitting pins. And I didn't want to go for Nitro. I do not like the Nitro cables. Now while we're on that note. There are many people in South Africa that knit with Nitro. Because it's, uh, it's affordable. It's a... It's a more affordable set of nice circular needles because the other one that is cheap in South Africa that is real cheap is the owl range. That is the biggest rubbish you can ever find. I, I remember when I had yarn in a barn. That was my dogs. Okay, when I had yarn in a barn, when I started yarn in a barn, I was um, <coughs> oblivious to what was available in the market. At that stage, I was still knitting on straight pins. I kid you not. So, I bought L. It's the biggest brand in South Africa. And I can remember one day, I stood in front of my shelves and I took a box and I put the box on the floor and I went like this and I threw all of them down into the box and I donated it to a woman in Brits with another yarn shop and I said to her, you can sell this, I'm not selling this rubbish. L is disgusting. It's got this fat plastic tube as a cable, so to speak, and the where the cable meets the needle, there's this little elbow bent in it. It's just terrible. And then I got, uh, I bought myself Knit Pro. I had a Knit Pro cubic set, which I was very happy with. Um, the cables irritated me at times. I if I took them out of storage after a while, I would take a bowl of hot water and lay it in the hot water, the cable, so that it would just relax a little bit and then I would knit with it. So then I found out about Chagu and um, Chagu had a steel cable encased in nylon and I sold my, no I didn't sell it, I gave my knit bros to my daughter and I bought the full Chagu set specifically for the cables, but the steel pins and me we don't love each other very much my tension is bad my my hands are not I, I just steel is not my thing and I get this terrible rash so I sold my chagu set and I'm um, at the moment I'm borrowing um, a knit pro set a knit pro symphony set from Ulta I'm waiting for my lantern moons to come now lantern moon for me was the happy medium it had um it has uh, wooden needles, but it has the steel cable encased in nylon. Now, I know many people in South Africa knit with Nitro. God bless you. Um, they will say to me, it's the best on the market. No, you can't make that statement if you've never knitted with Chagu, if you've never knitted with, um, what's the other brand that I nearly got, um, Hia Hia. If you've never knitted with Hia Hia, if you've never lit knitted with Lantern Moon, or if you've never knitted with anything else than Knit Pro and L, you can't say Knit Pro is the best in the market. What you can say is, it's sufficient for my needs. I get that. But for me, 
I'm not casting this thing on I tell you until I get my lantern moons because nit pro cables will drive me to let's not say that Rui <laughs> Kuldrang okay so and then I have another can you see this thing with me in the purple I don't know what's going on with me I'm into the purples lately I don't know why but anyway this is Naughty Habit. This is the Light Fingering 4-ply Merino. This is the same yarn that I used for the hat trick. Now what is going to happen with this one? A hat trick. What is going to be different? It's going to be crocheted. <laughs> so there's a crocheted version of the hat trick coming soon. Um, I don't know when. I think I must first finish the cardigan. Uh, Yo. Yeah. That might be it. I'm so tempted. Mm, I'm so tempted. These two I will leave alone. I will not start with them until I've got my lantern moons. They will probably be the first product project project on my lantern moons. But this one is calling me. And I don't know for how long I will be able to ignore the calls. Crochet me! something like that okay so that's about all the news I have now next week I'm not going to be here so next week Friday I will post the video for you on Friday morning because Friday afternoon we will be leaving to go to a game farm for the weekend with Alta and her husband they've invited us so we're gonna have a nice weekend in the African bush yeah I don't know what project I'm going to take with me. I'll see. I might go to the farm with this and sit and frog it. It might be safer to frog something than to knit something when you're having so much wine in the bush. <laughs> or I'll take this because it's mindless. It will be a, a nice relaxing crochet. Oh shame I've shaken you so much you're coming undone. Okay, I'm not going to take the lock cabin with me. Definitely not. And I don't think I'm going to take Miss Crossover with me either. So I'll still see. <clears throat> okay, so that's what I've got planned for the week. Now, um, I still wanted to show you Daphne's sweater. Yeah, um... Let me show you Daphne's sweater. So if you think, like me, that Daphne is absolutely beautiful and you would like to see her in the official photo shoot, let me know in the comments. I'll get Daphne to read them all. And what else was there? Yeah. I also post the link to my Patreon for you. If you want to join my Patreon, it's $3 a month. It's just a subscription for you to help me do what I do best, and that's designing. And in exchange for that, I give you some patterns for free every month as they become available. And I also post some behind-the-scenes content there as well. Okay, that's it for my slow Saturday. I hope you're going to have a wonderful weekend. Enjoy every moment of it, and don't listen to society. You know, I was... yeah. I know somebody, he used to say, stuff the people, we are the people. Obviously, he didn't use the word stuff. F the people, we are the people. Exactly like that. See you next week.